Good morning guys from a beautiful morning here in Jumsum. We arrived here yesterday from the small beautiful village of Marfa. Today we are going on a very special trip to the furthest region here in the mountains. How to do it? Yep. So we're leaving our incredible little homestay. We'll show you that later when we come back for lunch today. But today we are we have two places we want to visit. We want to visit one of the most beautiful temples. You can go up into the mountains here. It's the most furthest region you can probably drive up on a car. And uh, and then we'll come back down and visit a really beautiful lake that's just right about five, ten minutes away. Uh, from here. If you look just down there, that river runs all through Jumpsum and all the way down to Marfa as well. And we're located just on the outside of Jumpsum, just a little bit away from the airport so that we don't hear all the airplanes taking off in the morning because they've been taking off at 6.30 early. And uh, if you're staying by the airport, you're going to hear that like every 30 minutes, every hour. Uh, the airplane taking off, but beautiful morning here. It's cold. It's very chilly and you can see the snow on the top of the mountain peaks It's absolutely incredible here, but there really isn't too much to do here in Jomsom. It's more of a stopping point um, For people that are going either back to Pokhara on the airplane or for people that are going up into the mountain to the temple uh, because that's There's really only about two or three major tourist attractions here Hello. Good morning how was your sleep? Very good. Very nice. Very nice. It's police checkpoints. Another checkpoint. <laughs> There's been so many of them here. Okay, we got our permits checked again. This is like the third time we've gotten our permits checked. Make sure you don't lose them because you need them to get literally anywhere to any tourist spot in Nepal. We just stamped and then they just put a signature. Looks like the road is uh, blocked with some uh, rubble. They're trying to fix the road here. For the most part so far, the road has actually been pretty nice, pretty paved. It's actually unpaved, but they've uh, done a really good job of uh, smoothing it out so it's not bumpy uh, because they're getting ready to pave the roads here. But um, yeah, this one section here, they're still, they're still trying to fix, looks like. We've arrived to Muktinath Temple, where all the jeeps and the buses get dropped off here. And now we got about, um, I want to say, a 20 30 minute hike up or walk up there. And it looks like we do have the option of taking some donkeys or some ponies up, which I have read reviews online. It's going to cost you between about 300 rupees, anywhere up to 700, depending on how well your negotiation skills are. You want to ride a pony? It's a very small horse. It's a very small <laughs> horse. Lots of the families out here have little stores set up in front of their homes selling souvenirs, lots of hats, gloves, everything to keep you warm because typically it's a lot colder up here. We're at a much higher elevation, about 3,700 meters, and uh, air is much thinner up here. As you guys are driving up here though, it's uh, absolutely beautiful. You get a mixture of the cold desert landscape, the dry desolate landscape out here, as well as a mixture of uh, the lush green farmlands that the locals are using for agriculture and to survive off of. It's a very unique landscape that you only really get to see in several countries um, across the Himalaya mountain range. And we've been lucky enough to be able to see some of that. Skardu and Hunza uh, in Pakistan, northern India and Spiti Valley. And now we're here in Nepal, in the northern 
Mustang region in Nepal where we get to see a very similar landscape. It's just absolutely beautiful here. This is actually a pretty big town. Yeah. I wasn't expecting there to be a big town like this up here. I know, it's really beautiful here. You could definitely I think we can stay here. Yeah, you could definitely stay here at night. Yeah. Too bad we already booked our, I our, know. our stay in Jump Zone. Yeah. This will be fun now. Yeah, I was, it, I was expecting this to be very just like t temple and nothing's going on. But then as soon as we arrive, we walk a little bit up <laughs> and then there's a, a little town here. They have hotels, restaurants. Yeah, you can definitely stop for, for some food. Yeah. Here. Tea. tea. I think I want to get some tea before. Yeah, before we Let's go. Yeah. This is the first real coffee shop we've ever been in in Nepal. And one, one and apple pie. And I got chargers here for you, <laughs> in case you want to get some work done, man. This is like a proper cafe. Espressos, americanos, lattes, hot chocolate, even apple juice, because we are close to Marfa. Good menu. Thank you. Do you have sugar? Thank you. It's actually flat white. Flat white. Look at this apple pie and cinnamon roll. Looks amazing. Oof. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. That was an amazing coffee shop. We'll put the location of it down below. Um, if you're staying here, Marfa, fantastic place. Great food. Nice pastries for bait from the bakery. And they have good coffee. Here we are, guys. We have reached the steps to get to the top. It doesn't look too steep, though. Not too bad. You can still, you can see the top. Oh my lord! <laughs> We've just begun. <sighs> and that wasn't that bad. Here we are. Ah, we are finally here. We've arrived at the pools, which is where people come to swim, to bathe. So if you look here, people are behind me washing themselves under the 108 sprouts, as they're called, or waterfalls. If you notice, it looks somewhat similar to what, you, uh, what you've seen in Bali, where they go to the temple and uh, bathe in the waters. This is both for Hindu and Buddha. So as you can see behind me, you got an area to take off your shoes, to put them in a shoe box. And there's changing rooms for women and men if you want to change into um, something to get wet in, basically. So yeah, currently people are bringing uh, empty bottles and then uh, they take a little bit from each of the water, water spouts. Mm -hmm. I think that's because it's the holy water, so they just want to drink it themselves and drink it. Today we are not going to bathe in the waters, in the holy waters, because it is just really cold out here. And uh, I do not want to get sick tomorrow. Oh, there's the waterfall. So I'm assuming that all the water for their water sprouts, 108 water sprouts, comes from here. And this is what it looks like during the winter time you can see the mountains are just all covered in snow these are the 108 water sprouts and this is what the temple looks like inside which we can't photograph um so they've got a photo here for you just to see what it looks like and then just across from the temple you have this enormous buddha overlooking the entire valley here in mustang and the village down below. <laughs> it really reminds me of my time through motorbiking through the uh, Indian Valley in the, Him in the Himalayas. Because I saw a very similar Buddha to this. Absolutely beautiful. And then for those of you that have the money to spend, you can take a helicopter ride all the way up here and skip all of the rough roads. Welcome to another destination you can come visit here in Jomsom. It is called Dumba Lake. And we have to pay 30, 30 rupees for it. Yeah, not bad. It's really cheap. 
Guys, it is so windy here. One thing we've come to learn about Jomsom, if you're coming here, is after about 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it gets incredibly windy here. And, uh, well, if you're flying here, no, no thank you. The water is like an emerald green almost, and you're just surrounded by these huge trees and mountain cliffs. Reminds me a little bit of what Washington looks like in the US. Something you would see out of National Geographic is so beautiful behind me. So if you guys are coming here, that's the entrance fee right there. For Nepalese it's only tw uh, 30, huh? 30? 20, only 20. And then for foreigners it's 30. I'm surprised, usually it's much more for foreigners. It's usually like five times the price for foreigners. All right, back in the car we go and back home. <laughs> so windy. Are you? Yeah. Uh, it's roughly about one o'clock, almost lunchtime now. So we left at seven, I think. So it should give you an idea of how long you need to explore the uh, temple and then come back down to the lake. <sighs> Had a breath already. So we're gonna head back to our hotel. Show you where we're staying. We are staying at. The nicest hotel that we have ever had so far here outside of Pokhara. So we'll show you that now. So this is the hotel, Hotel Mesa Kondo. Just come on in, the gate is open. And first thing you'll notice is that it is just full of apple trees here. Everywhere you look is apple trees. And then this is uh, the reception area. Very nice, you can eat here if you'd like. They got a big TV. Nice sitting area for you to lounge and then the reception and this is where the rooms are here So this whole full courtyard area is just again full of apple trees Everywhere you look this is probably the nicest room we've ever stayed in here so far outside of Pokhara um, uh, The beds for one are actually comfortable. They're not uh, as hard as a brick. This is by far the comfiest mattress we've slept in so far, I think, just in general in Nepal. A nice tea kettle here. We don't have any tea or coffee provided, but we do get two bottles of water, which we've pretty much mostly drank already. Two big beds, nice little seating area. They've got even a heater. It hasn't gotten cold yet here in Nepal. However, uh, last night it did get pretty chilly in the morning. It's roughly about seven degrees Celsius in the morning here. <laughs> you should bring a jacket, <laughs> but they do have that if you need. They've got extra blankets here for you. They've got an extra comforter towel here, lots of hangers, and let me show you the bathroom. The bathroom is very stinky actually, not because we've used it, but because the plumbing in Nepal is generally very stinky. And so you got toilet paper, your bum washer, You've got your toilet and your shower. We're gonna go have some lunch. We haven't eaten yet since breakfast time at the coffee shop, so let's uh, get a bite to eat here. So this is the restaurant. Very nice, very clean, bright. And they've got the bar here. Um, all of the utensils and stuff over there, some water for you to drink. Today we ordered our favorite, momos. I've already lost track of how many momos we've had here in Nepal, but that's our go-to dish because we know we're not going to get food poisoning from momos. The most delicious momos I have ever had anywhere. We're not going to really do anything else today. Um, just going to edit some of the videos and unload all the footage from here in Nepal. Um, if you guys have any questions, any at all, about coming to Gandruk, uh, Marfa, uh, Jomsom, or even the temple that we just went to today, let me know. Um, because it's, uh, I really didn't, couldn't find a lot of information when I was doing the research for it. So yeah, comment down below any questions about it because I know it may be difficult to plan by yourself and uh, yeah, and we'll do our best to answer them. But overall, beautiful area here in Jomsom and, and Mustang in Nepal. It's absolutely gorgeous and the season is about to begin here. Uh, we were talking to our host. A lot of people coming here tomorrow. About 10 guests gonna be staying here. Right now it's just empty, it's all of it's just me and Catania. So really beautiful place. Highly recommend staying here if you guys are gonna be coming to Jumpsome. It's a little, uh, it's about like 
10 minutes from the airport so you can't really hear the airplanes taking off and landing which is great thank you guys so much for watching we'll be heading back to Pokhara tomorrow and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video peace